The Murrumbidgee Irrigation Area, situated in western New South Wales, is a purpose-built irrigation area. The diverse and productive region contributes over $5 billion annually to the Australian economy and cotton is moving south into this region. Australia's cotton is regarded as some of the best in the world. A vital stage in the process of cotton production is ginning, which separates the cotton lint from the seed and trash in the modules. The purpose of a cotton gin is to remove the seed and the trash from the, what they call the seed cotton, the field cotton. So basically the gin receives the cotton in off the farm, removes the, you know, the, the, you know, the bit of leaf and stick and dirt that's in it, and re then removes the seed. We then put that into a bale, a 227 kilogram bale, which is how the, the lint is sold on the worldwide basis. Southern Cotton is one of Australia's leading cotton gins. The story of how it came to be built begins with six farmer friends whose determination and persistence saw the $25 million gin built in under 12 months. A remarkable feat. A couple of uh, the other directors, Cummins Brothers, they, um, Roger in particular, was talking about the need for a gin, how much cotton was going to be grown in 2012 and how much was going to have to be trucked you know, six or seven hundred kilometres away to get ginned. The amount of money that was going to be spent on freight was equivalent to the interest on borrowing the money to build a gin. Traditionally the uh, merchants build the gins or own the gins in Australia so we uh, we lobbied all of those and um, basically there was really no appetite from any of them to build a gin. They'd just come out of the drought. The only way that we were going to get a gin was to look like at that stage build one ourselves. The initial idea that Tim and Roger had was that they were looking for the idea of building a small gin just to handle their own cotton. And that idea grew once Jared and Larry and Scott became involved with it, you know, and talking about it. So we thought, well, if we're going to build a gin, we might as well build a big one. I started work here in the October. It was a shed with a hole in the ground. We had to import all the equipment. There was no electricity here on site. There was no phone lines. There was no internet. Every day there was a different obstacle. Every day in, in, in terms of uh, the build, the construction of the gym, uh, not just financing, but in terms of the build with hold-ups, with floods, with a lot, of, uh, a lot of things that took place that those guys stayed the journey and they, uh, you know, they were very committed to it. I always knew it was going to work. I mean, there was a lot of times there where we thought, you know, we didn't have the money and we didn't have the backing and we thought, uh-oh, we're going to lose everything because we put everything on the line. And I always say my wife never slept for nine months. I think I only, it was probably one week that I didn't sleep probably in the whole building of it because I just knew that we were going to do it. Their commitment and risk paid off, and despite the stress and blisters, they achieved what many said was impossible. Southern Cotton went on to set the record for a first year gin, processing over 166,000 bales. It was, a, it was a big deal when you look around here and have a look at the site and, and what was achieved in that time frame, and the spin on effects of it as well. It's just, it's unbelievable. A lot of people have, have have appreciated the fact that we've done it because it has given them and it's given the area an extra crop to grow. Or it was cost prohibitive before but now with a gin right at their doorstep it's actually um, given them some, you know, another string to the bow of their farming operation. Cotton coming into this area has been a re really refreshing thing for um, the MIA. It's certainly given us another choice of crop. I've been a farmer for 25 years now. When we started farming, we were predominantly rice and sheep. Because of the drought and, and other things, we got rid of the livestock and have just concentrated now on, on row crop farming. And, um, and cotton came along four years ago and that um, gave us another really valid choice of, of commodity to grow. Another element of the gin's success is their state-of-the-art technology in quality measurement, cleaning, humidification, processing and data traceability. These ensure both a maximum yield and higher lint quality. It also allows for more cotton to be ginned faster. In the cotton industry, uh, farmers get paid for their cotton once it's been ginned. So you need to gin the cotton as fast as possible and, and we put a lot of effort into designing our gin so that we could get as high as possible throughput through there, I think. 
Southern cotton is committed to quick turnaround, which means that during ginning season, it becomes a 24-hour operation. Uh, the amount of logistics involved and the amount of trucks, we, we need 35 road trains of farmers, uh, cotton round bales coming in a day, we've got to have, we, we need on the other end of the, the process side, we need you know, 10 B doubles to, to take all the seed away. We need, you know, 10 uh, bale trucks to take the, the, the finished product to the port. So we've got 10 days of storage facilities for our bale shed. So it's all about key logistics management. It's Southern Cotton's dedication to improving processes that has seen the gin earn a number of awards. Designed and built with agricultural tourism in mind, their efforts have played an important role in helping educate the public and demystify many of the misconceptions held about cotton in regional New South Wales. I think uh, one of the big things that we've found over the last few years is that divide from country and city people and so we've built the gin so that it can take tours through here and we've put a platform up so you don't have to go out onto the floor um, and it's very safe for the people to go through. Every year we have hundreds of tours through the gym. These tours vary from school groups, retirement groups, to people who are visiting the region. They're really an important mission to Southern Cotton for a couple of reasons. To tell people about the reality of the sustainability and efficiency of the growers in the region. Not only um, the story of cotton farming from, from field to fabric, but also the story of, of all irrigated agriculture in the region. Regional tourism and agriculture go hand in glove. I mean, it's a, it's a vital part of, uh, of the Riverina. Uh, I'm pleased to say through the Riverina Regional Tourism that we've identified that agritourism is a vital uh, conduit for what's happening in our area. It sets us apart. Uh, we have the Hunter Valley with its lovely wineries and the, and the, and the uh, Yarra Valley and places like that. But the Riverina really is tied to the land. As we are standing around here with this wonderful cotton around us, this is what the backbone of this country is all about. It's extremely important, not just from an education platform of this is cotton, but it's an education that will take the wider community to understand that agriculture is not just a taker of money, but it's actually a giver back to the economy of Australia. Uh, to go through and see how these things are processed with the most up-to-date equipment is critical that people understand that. And there's lots of sites around here that are trying to get to it, whereas sites like Southern Cotton have actually gone ahead and done it. And being a local award-winning business centre, they really are taking the lead on that. The gin also greatly contributes to the local economy, not only through local sponsorships, but employment of up to 40 seasonal workers, including many international travellers. Seasonal workers has long been a thing in Leeton for the different crops, uh, whether they came here picking oranges or, or um, harvesting vegetables. With Southern Cotton they come here with a great level of skill, they're well trained, they contribute to the community both socially and financially, so it's a great boon to the community to have someone like Southern Cotton doing their processing here. Dedicated to the education of their growers, part of Southern Cotton's mission is to be instrumental in the expansion of the crop in the valley and also in the global promotion of the industry as a whole. Southern Cotton, you know, it's been a huge commitment to the community. With, you know, I'm not certain, I'm not certain that the industry would be where it is today in the southern, in, in southern New South Wales if that gin hadn't have been built. But they stayed the journey and they were committed to it and they worked together. I mean, it's. Uh, that's the key to their success. It has been all the way through. Yeah, it's been a slog and we've sort of pretty much done it on our own, but now on reflection, it's, it's all worth it. I got a lot of satisfaction about what we achieved and while we were building it, I had a real sense of what we we're about to do and yeah, try to really portray to some of the guys that you know, this is a big deal what we're doing here. So we'd be proud of what you achieved. And, and they all are, we all are.